The manual says this inverter is 88% efficient, but that's the peak. How efficient is it when you have a small load? How efficient is it when you have a really high load? I don't know the answer, but I'm curious, and I know some of you are as well. So if you want to find out with me, stick around. I'm going to be setting up the best experiment I can think of, and that's just going to be plugging in stuff that I have around the shop and watching the meters go, and then I'll plot the points on an Excel spreadsheet, and we can all look at that and see how efficient this is. Now, I think that's a pretty good way of testing the efficiency, but if you're an electrical engineer and you know a better way, then please leave a constructive comment down below, and I'll try to make a better video for us. Some of this can be dry, so go ahead and skip forward to the part that you want to see. This inverter is rated to work with battery voltage of a nominal 48 volts, but typically when you're working with a lead acid battery, the voltage is going to be somewhere higher than 48 volts. It's not going to be lower. This inverter will actually shut itself off at 42 volts, uh, according to the manual. I haven't run it down that far yet, so I don't know for sure. My batteries that I have up here these are Chevy Volt batteries, and I have them arranged in 12 cells in series, so my battery bank is actually a nominal voltage of 44 volts. Its operating voltage then is going to be somewhere lower than the ideal operating voltage for this inverter. I suspect we're going to see some kind of decreased efficiency because of that. Uh, right now, the battery is sitting here at 45.24 volts. So this is, this is a pretty good uh, voltage for the battery because it's right in the middle of where the battery is going to be usually in its life. Uh, and I, I'm glad for that. But we might see this inverter not get all the way up to 6,000 watts or it might have somewhere lower than 88% efficiency. I mean, I don't know, but we're going to find out. So that's why I'm excited about running this test. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shut off the solar panels and that's over here. So right there you can see that the solar panels are putting in 150, 60, 70 watts and that's going into the battery and the inverter is off right now. So that's not uh, drawing anything. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to come around on the side of the breaker box to this breaker. This is my ground fault protection device. We'll shut this off. As you can see, so now the solar panels are not sending any electricity to the charge controller. So all the electricity that we are going to record is going to be flow out from the batteries. And that's through this. This is the BMV 712 meter from Victron. And it's reading from this shunt back here. So that's going to give us the wattage out from the batteries to the inverter. We need a way to measure all the electricity coming out of the inverter, and that's on the 240 volt alternating current side. I'm going to be using this device. This is called a TED, or The Energy Detective. This is a very old model. They have newer models available today. But this is the one that I own. There are two associated clamps on the electrical wires inside the main electrical box. I have those clamped on the generator leads, which I'm actually going to be running the inverter into the generator port and uh, that's what we're going to be measuring then is, is all the electricity coming out. So we're going to plug this guy in out here in the garage. That way we can see this meter, we can see this meter side by side. The first thing to do is actually turn the Ames inverter on. There are two modes, standby and idle. Ames actually calls standby uh, power save on and then the other mode they call power on. Now standby mode is designed to save on your electrical use. It sends out a small pulse every three seconds. Uh, this can save you some on energy. The downside is that other appliances such as your uh, phantom loads, your garage door openers for example, they need a supply of electricity to keep the receiver on. Without that, 
uh, it won't be able to sense when you press your little button in your car and you won't have your automatic garage door openers. Now idle mode will power everything no matter how small it is. That includes the garage door openers which might be as low as you know 10 watts, 5 watts, something like that. It'll keep those on so you can still click. Now the manual says that standby mode is 30 watts and idle mode is 80 watts. Let's find out and we'll switch it on and now we'll see how many watts it draws in idle. Isn't that interesting? It's actually drawing 66 watts in idle mode. The manual says that should be reading 80 watts. That's a pleasant surprise. It draws less than what the manual says it should be drawing in this mode. Uh, cool. I, I wonder why that is. Um, maybe because it's cooler in the garage? Let me see what the temperature is. So right now the garage is 50 degrees. So maybe this is running more efficiently because it's cold. Maybe it was tested at some higher temperature like 80 degrees. It, it, if I can remember, I'm going to try to retest this after we run our loads so the internal elect electronics are hot and then we'll recheck and see if the idle watts are more after that point. Before I get a bunch of comments saying 50 degrees in the shop is cold, you know, well, remember I'm, I'm heating the shop 100% just with solar hot water. So, you know, it's it's free heat that I'm gathering for the shop and I just allow the shop temperature to fluctuate with how sunny it is. So, Well now that this is on let's go inside the house and switch over from grid to this guy. So we're inside the box. I'm gonna turn off everything except the garage. That way we don't have any extra loads in the house. Go to generator. There we go. We're back out in the garage. Everything's off, but the inverter is on and it is supplying electricity. There are a few phantom loads out here. That's going to be the garage door openers and I also have a remote plug on my uh, air filter system for sawdust. So you can see we got 88 watts from the battery and 20 watts for the garage. Let's get some lights on. I have a ton of lights in the garage and they're all LEDs, but I just got a lot of them. And I have some on one switch over us, which is kind of the car portion. And I have more over on that half, which is kind of the shop portion. Let's turn on the half that's over us right now. Okay. 404 watts from the battery, 300 and 40, 30, I'll call that 335 uh, for the uh, electricity from the inverter. Let's call that 866 and 780. Uh, we're not even one sixth of the way there yet. Let's, uh, let's start plugging in some more things. So with this electric heater on low, we are now drawing one point 1.59 kilowatts and 1.48 kilowatts. Let's switch this to high or 2.24, 2.11. So now we have 3.04, 2.8, 3.72, 3 3.36. So this is a six kilowatt inverter and we're at 3.3 kilowatts. So we're a little bit over halfway. 3.92, 3.56. And as you might be able to tell, I'm trying to do a mixture of some resistor loads and some motor loads to try to make this realistic. 4.96. 4.5 Heat gun in high
6.45. Holy cow, that was incredible. We went over six kilowatts. I really wasn't expecting that. I thought that this thing was gonna die earlier than six kilowatts because the battery voltage is, you know, lower than probably what the engineers were originally planning for. When they built this, they were probably planning for, you know, more like uh, over 50 volts because of lead acid. Uh, so since I was running out of stuff, let's turn this water heater on, which acts like my boiler for the uh, radiant floor system. Although I don't typically need it um, because I just run this whole system on the solar. But let's uh, let's take a look. 240 volt, yeah. So that's a 4,500 watt element, lower and upper. Uh, so 5.24, 4.63. Let's try something different. I use this big dust collector for big shavings, like when I'm routing or planing. Let's turn this on. Let's call it 5.91, Over 5.2, 6.81, 6.82, 6.07, over 6 kilowatts. Low, 7.43, 6.59, let's try this on high, high, 8.06, 7.12, holy cow, over 7 kilowatts. I can't believe this thing was able to do over 7 kilowatts. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> uh, now that this thing should be warm, not that it feels warm. It doesn't feel warm. So let's see if the idle watts are any higher. Okay, so we're unplugged, so we're not having any phantom draws. And right now it says 63 watts. 63. Wait a sec, isn't that lower? than it was before. I don't know why it's lower. <laughs> let's, uh, let's turn the lights back on. Well, that sure was a lot of fun. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it answers some of the questions. Quite frankly, guys, I did not think this inverter was gonna reach 6,000 watts because my battery voltage is so low, but it did it. It went over seven kilowatts. Quite frankly, I'm really impressed. I, I didn't think it was gonna do that. So, I guess thanks Ames for making a good product. Thanks everybody for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up and share it. Uh, and if you got any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I try to get to everybody. Thanks.